Hey devs, and welcome back to week six of our ongoing Android application development course. This week, we're going to be taking a look at navigation within our app. Specifically, we'll be diving into the Android navigation architecture component, and we will be refactoring our app to use the navigation component to navigate between the different screens in our app. Along the way, we'll take a minor detour into material design and give you a quick overview of the material IO website that you can use to find information about specs, sizing, uh, user interactions, and different things to give you a nice consistent UI and UX within your app. And we'll tie it all back together by showing how the navigation component can work with some of the material design elements in our app, such as the app bar and bottom navigation, which we will be implementing in our app towards the end of the demo. So as always, we will jump over to the slides and at the end of the lecture, we will have the demo code walkthrough and update our app for bottom navigation. All right, let's go ahead and jump into our week six lecture then. So as usual, we will start with our project demo give you a quick look at how we will be updating our app this week. Then we're going to dive in and explore the navigation component from Android Jetpack. And then towards the end, we will discuss material design a little bit and how we can get consistent UI styling and consistent user interactions using some of the principles found in material design. So for our week six project updates, there's a few key things we'll be doing. We're going to be implementing app navigation using the navigation architecture component. So that's going to be the big change for this week. As we do that, we will also be adding a weekly forecast fragment that eventually will display the forecast for our location for the next seven days. We're not going to get into to loading that data this week, but that will be coming. And then we will be adding bottom navigation to our app as a means of navigating between these different forecasts that we have available. So if we want to jump over to our emulator, we can take a peek at what we'll be building this week. So you see right off the bat, we have a little bit different of a project structure here. Down at the bottom, we see that we have this bottom navigation view. We'll also see that we immediately start out in a forecast screen and we can tab between these bottom navigation tabs to switch which forecast data we're viewing. So eventually this will display uh, the current forecast for this day and then the weekly forecast. And now we still can click into uh, an individual list item and see the details and we can go in and update our zip code if we need to. So that's a look at what we're going to be doing this week. And all of this is really going to be built on the Android uh, navigation architecture component. So let's start talking then about navigation in our Android apps. You know, how do we move between screens in our app? Well, Android Jetpack has brought with it a, a new means of doing that. And that is the navigation architecture component. Uh, the architecture components themselves are a collection of libraries meant to make different architectural things easier within Android. So navigation being one of the key things among that. So what exactly is the navigation component then? Well, the navigation component does a number of things for us. It uh, manages fragment transactions so that we don't have to do things like get a reference to the fragment manager, a call begin transaction, call things like add, replace. We don't have to do pops. We don't have to manage the back stack. The navigation component does all of that for us. The navigation component also provides us a, a navigation graph that is an explicit representation of what screens and destinations are available in our app and how they interact with one another. As part of that graph, we get a nice a visual editor that lets us actually visualize this in a really nice way and, and edit this visually like we've done with, let's say, constraint layout. We also get a nice uh, plugin for managing safe arguments between fragments. So when we start a new fragment, we can uh, specify what data that fragment needs to run properly, and, and we can enforce that in a compile time way, which is really nice. 
Um, and, there, and there's some others that we will be talking about later on in the lecture. So that's all well and good, but what problems does navigation actually aim to solve? You know, as we've seen in this course, uh, navigation can be fairly straightforward. So what types of things um, make us actually want to use the navigation component? Well, there's a number of things that the navigation component gives us, which are pretty nice. So one of them is that we just get this nice visual representation of our app's navigation. And we'll see an example of that in just a moment. Oh, again, compile time validation of destination transactions is really nice. Being able to know that we have the right data when we're going from one fragment to the next is really helpful. Deep link routing is another feature that is built right into navigation component. It makes it very easy to specify which deep links a particular fragment needs to handle. And the navigation controller, which we'll talk about in a minute, can handle those deep links and route them to the proper fragments as they are received, which is really, really helpful. Uh, simplified animations is another thing that's really nice. Now we haven't really delved into animations in this course, but specifying animations between fragment transactions or even between activities can be a bit of a chore. It's often a fair bit of little boilerplate code, a lot of the same kind of simple lines added here and there. And, and a lot of times it just feels like more work than it's worth. Well, with the navigation component, the, the visual editor makes specifying basic animations really, really easy and goes a long ways towards making your app feel more polished without a lot of extra effort. Uh, and then again, we'll just call out one more time, compile time validation of fragment args is, is super helpful. So here's an example of a navigation graph. We'll see here that we have a number of screens and when he, then we have uh, some arrows specified kind of between the screens. So let's break down what we're actually seeing here. So each of the screens on here represents a, a fragment in our app and these are referred to as destinations. These are places we can navigate to that will actually be visible on the screen and that the user can interact with. The arrows represent actions, and an action is essentially a transition from one destination to another. So if we look here, we can see that we can go from the title screen to the register screen. We can go from register to match, match to in-game, and then from in-game, we can go to game over or results winner. And then from either of those screens, we can go back to match. So you, these actions can move linearly, or they can provide loops to help you jump back to other spots in your navigation graph. And this visual editor is really one of the key parts of navigation that make it a pretty large departure from how navigation has been handled on Android in the past, but also a pretty um, awesome new feature because this is something that we've never had before. And there's a lot of benefit to something like this. So we've talked about a little bit uh, about the conceptually what navigation can do. What, what functionality does it actually provide for us? Um, well, it manages fragment transactions. It provides us that visual navigation graph. It will automatically generate the action classes that specify how to go from one fragment to another. It provides built-in APIs for animating between these transactions. It has automatic support for uh, routing deep links to the necessary fragments. And it also integrates with material design UI components in our app. And we'll, and we'll look at this later, but it can help us automatically update things like the app bar at the top of our screen or the bottom navigation view down at the bottom of the screen. Now to provide this functionality, there's three key classes or components here. We have the navigation graph itself. Uh, the navigation graph is an XML resource document. So you think of it very similarly to how you might think of a layout or a menu. All of these destinations and actions will be defined in XML. That XML is then what powers that visual representation that we just looked at. We then have a nav host and the nav host is very similar to having a layout to display your fragments. Basically, the nav host is a location 
where the nav controller will place new fragments when they need to be added or removed. And then finally, the nav controller, it is this element that actually manages the transactions from one destination to another. It takes in actions, it takes in URIs, it takes in deep links, and then routes to the proper fragment and places that into the nav host. Now to make all of this work, uh, there's a few dependencies that we'll add to our project and we'll see that in the demo. Um, the, the first one here is optional, which is the navigation safe args Gradle plugin. However, because as I've mentioned, I think that the safe args feature for parameters, which means it validates that we're passing the right data to our fragments. I think that's really powerful. And so we will be using that in our demo this week. Then in our apps build.gradle file, we'll be adding the, the navigation fragment.ktx dependency and the navigation UI KTX dependency. So these will give us uh, all of the APIs and classes needed to implement navigation uh, in our apps and, and some nice Kotlin helpers to make that a little bit easier to do. So how do we actually go about implementing navigation in our app once we've added these dependencies? Well, there's a, a number of steps here, so we'll walk through it kind of one by one at a high level. And then in the demo, we'll actually get in and do these things in our code. So to start, we will create a nav graph. And the nav graph, like I mentioned, is a XML file where we can define destinations, actions, arguments, animations, things like that. Then within that graph, we will add a start destination so that the graph knows which fragment to show when it is started. Then we will add our nav graph to the nav host so that we have a place to put these fragments. And in our app, that nav host will live within our main activity layout file. Now, once we have the, the graph set up and we have a start destination, we can start to add more destinations. So if we only had one destination, there'd be no reason to use the navigation component because there wouldn't be any navigation. So we will add some more destinations within our navgraph XML file. We'll then connect those destinations with actions. And that action can then be used by the nav controller to navigate between destinations. So now let's talk a little bit about material design. So what is material design. This is something that maybe you've heard of, maybe you haven't heard of. So I think it's good to, to talk about it for a minute because it is pretty important in the world of Android development. So material design is a design language developed by Google. Uh, Google released their first version of material design back in roughly, I think it was 2014-ish. Um, basically material design came with the Android lollipop release and it was kind of revolutionary at the time because at that point there wasn't really a consistent design language for Android apps. Uh, I mean, there was, but not a lot of developing developers or teams, uh, were really sticking to it. There was a lot of their own stuff, which is why a lot of old Android apps looked very different from each other. And some of them frankly did not look very good. Um, so material design was really Google's first major attempt here to help standardize uh, how UI elements should look, the, the sizing, the styling, uh, even the interactions, you know, how should a button respond when you click it? Should there be a ripple? Should it increase its elevation a little bit? You know, how should uh, animations between screens be done? Um, basically, it's a, just a whole set of guidance around colors, typography, elements, sizing, transitions, stuff like that. And ultimately, it simplifies design for developers. It's really, really nice for app developers because it gives us some nice baselines to fall back on. If we don't have a designer with us or our designer is busy, we can fall back on material design for things like how large should this text be? How much spacing should I have between these elements? Uh, you know, what should the feedback look like when I touch a, a list item? And we've already actually touched on some material design in this course without necessarily knowing it that much. You know, as we have seen earlier, as we click on a list item in our app, we get that little ripple color. That ripple 
as we touch on an element, is an element of material design. Same thing as we click our fab, the elevation on that button changes a little bit and we see that little ripple as some touch feedback. Those are all elements coming from material design. And so it really is something prominent to Android. And thankfully, a lot of the components these days build in these elements of material design so that if we set up our theme properly, these elements will look and feel um, a way that is in accordance with material design without us having to do a lot of extra work. So if you want to learn more about material design, which I would encourage you to do if you're going to continue on with any type of app development or web development, uh, material.io is the best resource to start. So this is the website for material design. And here it's chock full of resources. They have design guidelines for individual elements. They have uh, documentation and specs for individual components. You know, they have icons available to you that you could download and use. They have accessibility guidance and uh, strategies for testing and implementing that. Um, and, and then a bunch of tutorials as well. And so one of the, the really useful, interesting things here is the component library. The component library defines different types of elements on the screen and then provides documentation and actual implementations of these for different platforms. So you see here we have app bar on the bottom or app bar on the top, and then we have links for Android, iOS, or Flutter, or even the web. And those links will take you to specific implementations and guidance for those platforms. We also have the bottom navigation there down in the bottom middle. Um, and again, that is something we'll be implementing this week. So as far as material design components go, this week we're gonna to be touching on two of them. We're gonna be looking at the app bar, which is the little bar at the top of our app. Um, often people will refer to it as the toolbar as well. And then we have the bottom navigation, which will sit down at the bottom and let us switch between screens in our app. So the app bar here, again, it sits at the top and it's typically a place to display actions and information related to the current screen. So we might have the title of our app or the title of the screen. And then we might have a menu button and some different actions associated with that menu. You might also have a back button or a button to pull open a, a navigation drawer. You see in the material IO specs, we also have a lot of good guidance here for how large a, an app bar should be. How big should the icons be? How tall should the bar be? Thankfully, if we just add a toolbar into our app, a lot of this stuff will come for free. Same thing if we inflate a menu, a lot of this stuff comes for free. So this is where uh, the components we have implement a lot of this stuff for us. But if we ever have questions or we ever need to do something custom, we can fall back on the material design specs to get some nice guidance to make that look good by default. Next up, we have bottom navigation. So bottom navigation sits at the bottom of the screen like you might expect. Um, really, bottom navigation is been adopted more recently because it's easier for people to access with their thumbs, which makes switching between top level destinations of your app a lot easier. So generally each tab in the bottom navigation view is going to have um, an icon and a label. This might change depending on how many elements you have down there and what size of device you have, but in general, you'll have both of those elements. Uh, it's possible to also show notification badges down in the bottom navigation view, uh, although we won't be getting into that in this course. Um, and then with the bottom navigation view, you can listen for things like selection of an element or reselection of an element, and you can respond to your screen accordingly. Uh, one example of this could be that you might want to listen for when you select, let's say, the Places tab in this example, and you might then want to update the title of your app bar to reflect the screen that you're currently viewing. And again, Material I.O. has uh, nice specs for how the app bar should look as well. Now, I just want to call out uh, one particular doc here on Material I.O., which is their understanding navigation document. Um, I will include links to this in the, the lecture notes, uh, but this is a really nice uh, read to understand some of the concepts behind navigation and how to think about building navigation into your application. So this is a good resource for you to, to just review and help learn a bit more about how you could think about constructing the flow of your app. 
Another resource on Material I.O. that I want to point out is the color tool here. Uh, so this is at material.io slash resources slash color. Uh, and this is really nice because it provides the kind of standard material palettes for all of the different colors there. It then also lets you select a primary and a secondary color, which remember back to our, our theme in our app, we have a primary color, an accent color, and, a, and like a primary dark. Well, so these are stemming from that. So secondary color is essentially equivalent to the accent color here. Primary is the same as primary. And as you select different colors for those, it will show you how those colors can look and interact across different types of kind of mock designs. It also has tools for checking the accessibility of your colors, uh, which is really, really helpful when choosing your app theme. So this is, again, this is just something to look at if you want to update how your app looks or you're looking for a color scheme for, you know, a presentation or something. The color tool here is a nice uh, a resource available to us. Alrighty. So we've covered uh, what uh, navigation architecture component is, the problems it's trying to solve, kind of the, the functionality with it. Um, and we've also talked a little bit about material design and how that starts to play into bottom navigation and navigation as well. So now we'll go ahead and jump over to Android Studio and we'll start our code demo as we update our app to implement a navigation and specifically bottom navigation. As we start off building out our app towards using the navigation component, we're going to need to first start clearing out some of the existing stuff we have in our app towards showing fragments on the screen. So to start with that, we were going to open up main activity. And we're going to start removing some stuff from the screen. So one thing we're going to remove is to come down to main activity dot on create. And we're going to remove, and uh, by, by remove, I mean delete, this fragment transaction to show the location entry fragment. So we'll go ahead and delete that. Then we're going to want to open up our layout file. So we'll open activity underscore main. And here we're going to want to delete this frame layout that we were using as our fragment container. So again, we'll go ahead and delete that as well. Then if we come back into main activity, we'll see down at the bottom we had these uh, navigate to current forecast method and navigate to location entry method. Those currently rely on that fragment container. However, we're going to be replacing the logic for how we navigate to things to make use of the navigation component. So for now, we're going to just highlight these uh, lines of code and comment them out by hitting either command forward slash or control forward slash. So here I've commented both of those out and now we're just going to redeploy our app to see how it looks. And now, as you might expect here, we have just a blank screen. We have nothing on the screen. And honestly, that is exactly what we want right now. So let's jump back over to Android Studio. Now we want to add the navigation component dependencies to our app. So to start with that, I'm going to go into the left-hand side of the screen into our uh, project window. And we're going to navigate to our project level build.gradle file. So as I open that up, I'm going to be looking for this build script section right here towards the top. And specifically, I'm going to be looking for the dependencies section. And you'll notice a couple of lines already exist here. They both start with the word class path. So we're going to add another item here. So we're going to start off by typing class path, then two uh, quotes, and then we're going to add Android X dot navigation colon navigation dash safe dash args dash gradle dash plugin. And we're going to be using 2.2.2 .2 .2 as our version. 
And now just to double check that we are, uh, that we imported this properly, we'll go ahead and click the sync now button. And this should perform a Gradle sync for us. And it looks like that worked properly. So now, this has added the uh, safe args Gradle plugin. So this is what will enable Android Studio to generate uh, actual class implementations uh, that enforce the arguments we need to pass into fragments. So if we need a fragment that requires a zip code to load the forecast data, using the safe args plugin will help us enforce that parameter is present at compile time. Now to actually apply this new plugin to our app, we need to open up our app level build.gradle file. And up at the top where we have these other apply plugin lines, we're going to type apply plugin colon quotes again, Android X dot navigation dot safe args dot Kotlin. And now we're going to scroll down to our dependency block within the same app level build.gradle file. We're going to come down here uh, somewhere in the middle where we have these other implementation lines. And now we're going to add the dependencies needed for the navigation component itself. So again, I'll start with uh, implementation and then in our quotes here, we're going to be using Android X dot navigation colon navigation dash fragment dash KTX colon version 2.2.2. And then one more dependency that we need here is implementation double quotes again, Android X dot navigation colon navigation dash UI dash K T X colon two dot two dot two. So now we should have the, the navigation component. We should have some uh, navigation helpers in Kotlin to help us uh, set the component up properly. And we have applied the safe args plugin. So now let's Go ahead and sync this again. So you could use the sync button in the upper right of the screen or come up into your menu, find the button that looks like an elephant with a down arrow and click that. Either way, it's going to resync the project with Gradle. And thankfully here, it looks like everything has worked. So now we need to do sort of one more set of configurations to make sure that everything is going to work properly down the line for us. So again, within the app level build.gradle file, we're going to uh, scroll up a little way. So you should see that we have an Android block with some curly braces and then a dependencies block with some curly braces. Within the Android block, we're going to click in and create a couple lines. So this should be within the Android block here. And now we're gonna type compile options with an open and closed curly brace. And now in here, we're going to tell Gradle that we want to use Java version eight when it compiles our app. This is necessary for the safe args plugin to work properly. So to do that, we can type source compatibility equals Java version dot version. And it should start to pop up with some options here. We'll go ahead and navigate to version, uh, version underscore one underscore eight. And now we want to essentially duplicate this line, but instead of source compatibility, we want to define target compatibility. So now both our source and our target compilation options will be using Java version eight. And now one sort of extra piece here that we need to do is now we want to update our Kotlin compile options. So we'll come right below compile options and we will type Kotlin options. Once again, open and close curly brace. This time we'll type JVM target equals 
And then once again, it's going to be Java version dot version underscore one, one underscore eight. All right. So one more time, let's do a sync to make sure everything is proper. And all right, it looks like we are good. So now it's time to go ahead and add our navigation graph to our project. So to add a navigation graph, we're going to come over to the left, go to our project pane. And under the res directory here, we're going to right click, go to new Android resource file. And we're going to choose navigation from the resource type. And we're going to type, or we're going to uh, give this a name of main underscore nav. And then go ahead and hit OK. And then if it prompts you to add the file to Git, of course, say yes to the add. So now we actually have a navigation graph in our app. So let's go ahead and start adding some destinations to this graph. Now, by default, it has opened me up into the XML view. Um, but just to call out, this is just like working with layout files where we have an XML view and we have the sort of design editor view. So if you're open up into the XML, just like we do with layouts, go up to the upper right and open up the design view. Now, right now, because we do not have any destinations added to our project, this view does not look very exciting. So let's go ahead and add our first destination to our navigation graph. We can do this by clicking the little green plus icon, which stands for new destination. So if I click new destination, it's going to open up a list of fragments that it recognizes in our app that we could use as destinations. So we want to add the uh, fragment location entry as our first option here. So if I select that, it's now going to bring in a little preview of the location entry fragment. And this is now our first destination in our nav graph. And by default, you'll notice this little home icon next to the name. This is signifying that this is the default start destination for the graph. Now let's take a look at what this looks like in the XML. So in the XML view, we see here that we have defined a fragment. It's automatically given it an ID of location entry fragment. The name property here is the fully qualified name uh, of the location entry. So you see it's the full path to where that class is found within our code base. The label is a label that might get displayed, let's say in an app bar, depending on the configuration of your project. And then the tools colon layout attribute here is what is letting us uh, visualize what that fragment looks like in the editor. So now we need to go ahead and add a nav host that will store this nav graph. So to do that, we're going to open up activity underscore main dot XML. And now we're going to add a fragment container view that will act as our nav host. So to do that, we'll type a, an open a bracket here and we'll type Android X dot fragment and you should see fragment container view pop up. So go ahead and uh, hit enter to complete the fragment container view. And then we're going to give it an ID of nav underscore host underscore fragment. We're going to give it a name of, of uh, Android X dot navigation dot fragment dot nav host fragment for layout width and height we're going to use zero dp for both 
zero DP for width, zero DP for height, oops, there we go. Now to constrain this, I'm gonna jump over to my uh, design view here and I'm just going to drag the constraints to the parent edges. There we go. So now that should be mostly constrained properly. We'll jump back over to the XML just to double check. So now we have bottom to bottom of parent and end of parent, start, start of parent, top, top of parent. All right, that looks perfect. So now the interesting stuff. Now that we have this fragment container view that fills the screen to act as our nav host, we need to actually specify it as the nav host. To do that, we type app default nav host equals true. And then we'll enter a new line. And then we're going to do app colon nav graph equals at navigation slash main nav. So this is pointing the navigation graph that we just created to this fragment container view so that when activity main is loaded, fragment container view is going to load that nav graph for us. So if we go ahead and redeploy the app now, we should see this redeploy and we should now see our fragment is visible on the screen. This is because our navigation graph is inflated and it finds the default destination, which is location entry fragment, and automatically places that into the screen for us. So now let's go ahead and return back to Android Studio. And now we wanna work on building out this navigation graph. We wanna make it uh, look a little bit more interesting. So let's return to our main underscore nav.xml file. I'm gonna to return to the design view and I'm gonna click add destination again. And this time I'm going to select the current forecast fragment. And so you see now it's added that uh, preview of current forecast fragment. Uh, now that both fragments are in our app, we'll still only see the one fragment. In fact, we could do that real quick again here. So here it's redeployed, and yet we still just see the location entry fragment. And that is because while both uh, both fragments are in our graph, it's only showing one at a time. And we have no, not defined any type of way of getting from location entry fragment to the current forecast fragment. So we need to connect these two destinations in our graph so that we can navigate between them. Now there's a couple ways that we could add a destination. To start, we could click on location entry fragment. We could right click on it then and select add action and then select to destination. You see, when I do that, it brings up this uh, dialogue here with a number of things for us to fill out. So by default, it's going to ask us for an ID and it can generate that ID for us. The from field is specifying what destination we're navigating away from. And then we have to add the destination we want to navigate to. So in this case, we'll go ahead and select the current forecast fragment as our destination. And now below that, we could enter in some uh, animations if we wanted to, um, or the, the pop behavior, uh, launch options. We're not going to worry about any of those for now. We're just going to go ahead and click Add. And we'll see that when we click Add, we now have this arrow going from Location Entry Fragment to current forecast fragment. So this represents an action we can take that will navigate us from one fragment to the other. So that has been kind of one way of creating this. It's a little bit more verbose way. If we want to delete this action, we can just click on the arrow and hit delete. So now let's, uh, let's specify an action in a way that's a little bit more straightforward. 
If you move your mouse over location entry fragment, or the other fragment for that matter, you'll see a little circle pop up. This little circle looks a lot like constraint guidelines in constraint layout. So if you grab that little circle and you drag from one fragment over to the other, it'll create an action for you and it will pre-populate some of those fields with reasonable defaults. So if you look over to the right in the attributes pane, you'll see that it's automatically created an action for us going to current forecast fragment. It's left all the animation stuff by default and then it's applied some defaults to the pop behavior and launch options as well. So this is um, this is the easiest way to create an action. It's the way that I would recommend for most simple cases. If we open up into the XML, we can see here what that action looks like. So we'll see that the action is added within the XML of the fragment it's navigating away from. So in this case, location entry fragment now has an action with an ID. There's a very long ID that specifies very explicitly where the action is going and then the destination. So now that we have this, uh, this action defined, we want to go ahead and reconnect the fragment navigation within our app. So we're going to navigate over to uh, main activity and we want to scroll down to the navigate to current forecast method here. So this is one of those methods at the beginning that we commented out. And we commented it out because we were going to be replacing the old way of manually adding the fragment with the new simpler way of using the navigation component. So now we're going to use the nav controller to navigate to our desired fragment. So if we delete this commented out code, the first thing that we need to do is define the action that will be used by the nav controller to decide what fragment to show next. So to do this, I'm going to create a local variable called action equals and then we want to get access to the generated actions class. And so what we want to access here is location entry fragment directions. However, as you can see here, it's complaining. It's saying this class doesn't exist. So this is an important thing to keep in mind when you're working with a navigation component. Action classes and a safe argument classes those are generated by the, the plugins in the, in the compiler. So if you try to access one of these and it doesn't exist, it's likely, likely because it hasn't been generated. So in that case, go up to build and rebuild. That rebuild will trigger the compiler to generate the options needed. And so now I'm being prompted to import this class. And now I do have access to location entry fragment directions. So this directions class will contain all of the actions that have been specified in the nav graph. So you see here, I can add a reference to action location entry fragment to current forecast fragment. So you see, that's a very long name, but it's very clear what this action is doing. It's going to go from location entry fragment to the current forecast fragment, which is exactly what we want. So now that we have this action defined, how do we actually navigate to it? How do we make use of this action? Well, what we want to do is call a method called find nav controller. This is a method on an activity to let us get access to a nav controller within the activities layout. And so here we're then going to pass in the ID of the nav controller or of the, the nav host, excuse me, our ID dot nav host fragment. So now we have access to the nav controller. Now remember from earlier in the lecture, the nav controller is this class that manages the fragment transactions for us. So now we have access to that. We're going to call navigate and we're going to pass in the action. Once we've done this, 
we can redeploy our app. And once this is redeployed, we should be able to go to our current forecast fragment once again when we enter in a, a zip code and click submit. So that's the that's the first step. That has been our first uh, case of implementing a, an action going from one fragment to another fragment. So now let's continue on. Let's make it so that we can go backwards if we needed to. So let's once again open up main nav.xml. We'll look at our nav graph here. And now we want to create an action that goes from the current forecast fragment back to location entry fragment. So once again, I will drag from current forecast fragment over to location entry fragment. Then we're going to just go ahead and do a preemptive rebuild to regenerate the required directions class. Then we're going to once again, open up main activity. Now I'm going to go back down to our uh, navigate to location entry method that we had commented out before. And once again, I'm going to implement this to navigate to the desired fragment using the nav controller. So in this case, once again, I'm going to use val action equals, this time it's going to be current forecast fragment directions dot action current forecast fragment to location entry fragment. And then once again, find nav controller r dot id dot nav host fragment dot nav a gate action. So once again, let's rerun this. And so now, if I enter in a zip code, we're now getting our details here. If I click the floating action button here, we'll see it navigates me back to the location entry screen. So now both of those actions are implemented and we have two net way navigation uh, within our app. So now if we enter a zip code, we show our, our forecast here. If we click into one of these items, we'll see that we're still showing the details. And currently our forecast details is still being implemented uh, using, a, uh, using a separate activity. Now using the nav graph, um, it's nice to try and include as many things as fragments into the graph as you can. So what we're going to do is integrate forecast details into our navigation graph. And the first thing that we're going to need to do here is to convert our location details activity into a, a fragment. So let's go back to Android Studio and I'm going to close all of these files and then I'm going to open up location. Oops. I'm going to uh, open up, uh, Location, excuse me. Sorry, sorry. I'm going to open up forecast details activity. I had the wrong thing written in my notes. So, forecast details activity here. And now we want to convert this to a, a fragment. And so, we can do this fairly easily. And we're just going to walk through it step by step. So, the first thing that we want to do is to right click on the class name, go down to refactor, and then select rename. And then we're going to enter in forecast details fragment as our new class name, and then hit enter. And now when you do that, notice it changes the class name here in the code. It also renames the file. And you can see that over on the left hand side of the screen in the project pane. So that's the first step. Next that we want to go and update the layout. So we're going to click into activity forecast details XML. I'm going to go over to the left hand side of the screen. 
right click on the file name. Again, go to refactor, rename. And then I'm going to just replace the activity with fragment. So it should read fragment forecast details. And then I'll hit refactor. If I go back over to the fragment class, I should see now that the call to set content view has automatically been updated for us. Now there's one other quick change we need to make. We need to go into our manifest file and we need to delete the addition of that uh, fragment uh, because it's no longer an activity, so it no longer has any business being in the manifest. So I'll delete that line, go ahead and close the manifest, now we have some more work to do here in this, uh, this new fragment class. So to start, even though we changed the name to fragment, it still extends an activity, which means it still is an activity. So we're going to highlight app compat activity here and replace that with fragment and hit enter. As soon as I do that, it's going to show me a number of errors here. Basically, it's going to point out that there's all this stuff in here related to activities that's no longer applicable. So we can start fixing some of these by simply removing these two methods at the bottom related to the options menu. Uh, we're not going to be using either of those anymore. So we'll delete that. And that has greatly reduced the number of errors we have in this file. Next here we have onCreate. Now in fragments, remember that typically we're doing all of our setup in onCreate view. So I'm going to generate an implementation of onCreate view. And then we're going to just set this up like we have with our past fragments to get a reference to the view and return that. So I'm going to type val layout equals, and then I'm going to return layout, then where it says layout equals super dot on create view, we want to replace this with inflator dot inflate r dot layout dot fragment forecast details, then we're going to pass in the container and pass in false. So now on create view is ready to accept our setup logic. We're going to start by cut and pasting the line for temp display settings manager. And we're going to paste that into on create view here. Then where it is complaining about referencing this and needing a context, we'll update that with require context. Then we're going to come down here to where it says bind forecast data. And again, we're just going to grab all of this. We're going to copy it, delete it. We're going to delete the whole bind forecast data method. And then we're going to paste that up here within uh, on create view. This is just to kind of simplify our setup a little bit. Now here where it says find view by ID, and this is an error. And we talked about this last week. Uh, fragments don't have find view by ID. You have to use the, the fragments layout to find the view. So in this case, we'll type layout dot find view by ID. And once again, layout dot find view by ID. And then uh, for now, we're just going to comment out this code here for getting the extras for the data to display. And then we can go ahead and simply delete the onCreate method now that we're no longer using it. So now we should have forecast details fragments set up and ready to go. The next step is going to be to add location details, or excuse me, forecast details fragment to our navigation graph. So go ahead and open up main nav.xml. 
we're going to add a new destination, this time forecast details fragment. So we see again, it's added our little preview. So now we want to connect the current forecast fragment to our forecast details fragment. So I will select current forecast fragment and I will drag an arrow over to forecast details fragment. And just for good measure, once again, let's do a rebuild so that it generates the required action class. There we go. So now we're going to open up into current forecast fragment. We want to do this so that we can update how we're going to navigate uh, into our forecast details screen. So if we look at the show forecast details method here, we'll see that we were previously updating this using an intent and then starting the activity based on that intent. However, this doesn't work anymore because we are using a fragment. If we tried to start uh, this fragment with an intent, it would fail. So we're going to go ahead and delete this for now. Now we're going to open up our app navigator interface. Remember, this is the interface we've been using to communicate back to the activity to determine uh, how we want to navigate between screens. So within app navigator, we're going to add a new method. That new method is going to be called navigate to forecast details. And it's going to take in a forecast parameter. If we go back to current forecast fragment, we're then going to type app navigator dot navigate to forecast details and we're going to pass in that forecast object that we have. So now this is telling the app navigator, hey, we want to show the forecast details. Current forecast fragment doesn't currently know anything about how that will happen. It just knows, hey, I want to show forecast details now. So to actually show the details, we need to go to main activity once again. Now, if you look at the name of main activity, it's complaining that we do not have all required implemented methods. This is because we have added that method to App Navigator, but we haven't added it to Main Activity, which implements App Navigator. So we're going to come up down here and we're going to generate the navigate to forecast details method. And now we are free to implement this once again using the nav controller and the generated action class. So I will type val action equals current forecast fragment directions dot action. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, action uh, forecast details fragment. And we will once again do find nav controller r.id dot nav host fragment dot navigate and pass in <coughs> action. And once again, let's navigate our app and see what that has done to the navigation structure. So here were location details, or excuse me, location entry. I click submit. I now have my list here. And if I click on an item, we see that we have definitely done something. We've navigated to this blank screen. Um, now, what, uh, what is wrong with this? Why do we have the blank screen? Um, well, it's because we have not actually passed any data to that fragment. Oh, and we commented out the code that would pull that data in and set it to the, or set it to the layout. So that's why it's empty here. Uh, there's one other issue you might notice is that we have no back arrow here to indicate that we even went anywhere. Um, in fact, if I hit back, we do in fact go backwards. But it, there's no indication of that when you're just on this blank screen. So that's another issue 
that we are eventually going to look at. However, we're going to start by fixing the empty fragment. So we're going to uh, come back to Android Studio and we're going to return to forecast details fragment. And you can see here that again, we commented out the code that would update the UI uh, for the data that we would need. So how can we pass that data over now that we're not using intents? Well, this is where we're going to use the safe args plugin that I talked about previously. So let's go back to main nav.xml and our nice navigation graph here. And we're going to click on forecast details fragment. I'm just going to reorganize these real quick. So click on forecast details fragment. We're going to go over to the right hand side of the screen into the attributes pane. And you can see here where it says arguments. If I expand that drop down, it says nothing to show. So I want to go to arguments on the right hand side and I'm going to type or click the little plus icon. And this is going to pull up a dialog that uh, will let me add a new argument required for this fragment. And so for the first one, I'm going to type temp. I'm going to make it of type float, and then I'm going to click add. So that will give us that temp argument that we need to show the temperature. Once again, let's go over to the arguments tab in the attributes pane, click plus. This time I'm going to create an argument called description. It's going to be of type string. And then again, I'll hit add. Now let's open up the XML quick just to see what that has done. So down here at the bottom, we see our forecast details fragment. And within that fragment tag, we now have these two argument tags that really are pretty simple. It's an argument type and it is a name and a argument type. So float or string. So that's how it is going to know that this fragment needs arguments of this type to properly, uh, to work. Now, how do we actually pass the data needed for these arguments? Well, uh, once again, the safe args uh, compiler plugin here works by generating code for us. So we need to rebuild our project before we do anything. And hopefully this works pretty quickly. And now as soon as I do that rebuild, you see I'm getting an error here. It's telling me no value passed for temp and it's automatically shifted me over to main activity. So this is where I was previously defining that transition into the forecast details fragment. And previously we didn't have any data being passed to that. However, now that we've added arguments to that fragment, it's the compiler is enforcing that we need to pass in a description and a temperature value. And we do that using this action class that was generated. So, to make this happy, I'll type forecast.temp, comma, forecast.description. So that should go ahead and uh, make it happy at this point. Now let's go ahead and redeploy the app. So here we are, we've redeployed our app going to enter in a zip code once again. I click on a forecast item and shoot, we still see this empty screen. Well, why is that? Well, we go back over to forecast details fragment and it's because we have not actually taken those values that were passed in and put them into the UI in any kind of way. Um, so how do we actually go about doing that once again with the idea that we we're no young, longer using an intent? How can we grab the arguments when using the safe arguments plugin? Well, there's actually a, a pretty convenient way of going about doing this. If we go to the top of forecast details fragment, we're going to add a new property. It's going to be a private val, and we're going to call this args. And it is going to be of type forecast details fragment args. Again, this is a generated class. As soon as we added 
the argument values within our navigation graph and we rebuilt it, it generated this details fragment args class. Then we're going to get access to these using a delegate. A delegate is a special Kotlin feature. We're not going to get really into it now, but to use the delegate, we simply type by nav args. And then it's going to ask you to import it. So we'll just hit uh, alt enter and it should import that nav args uh, delegate function. Um, essentially what this is doing is the nav args is acting like a function there. So whenever we access the args property, the first time we do, it's going to use that nav args function to look up those args and get the data for us. So now that we have the arguments available to us, we can come back down to on create view and we can uncomment this code. And now we can update this to actually display the temperature data. So I'm going to delete this first line here because we're going to be able to do this all in one line. So now here where before we were passing in temp, we're going to type args dot temp. We'll see that we actually have a generated class, which is that fragment args class, and we have statically typed argument values. So we're no longer looking things up by key. We are actually looking them up with compile time validation. And so then on down on the next line where we are passing in the description text, we can type args dot description. So now finally, if we deploy our app once again, we should be able to enter a zip code, click on a forecast, and now finally we see the forecast data and it's all working with the navigation component behind the scenes. Okay, now we're ready to update our app to include bottom navigation. Now before we really do that, there's a few housekeeping things we need to do to make sure our, our themes and stylings are up to date. So the first thing that we're going to do is go over to the left hand side of the screen, navigate to res values, and then open up our styles.xml file. And here where we have our app theme, currently it is theme app compat light dark action bar. We want to update this to be no action bar. This is because we're going to provide our own toolbar within main activities layout, and that toolbar will be used as the app bar instead of the one provided by the theme. So let's now go over to activity main, and we're going to go ahead and add a toolbar that will be used as the app's app bar. So to do that, I'll start typing toolbar, and I want to use the Android X app compat widget version of toolbar. For the width, We'll pass match parent for the height wrap content. For the background, we want to use our primary color. So we're going to do question mark ATTR slash color primary. And then we're going to go ahead and close that off. And then we're going to open up the design view. And now we want to constrain it. So I'm going to select the toolbar. I'm going to go over to the attributes pane on the right. And I'm going to click the top, left, and right to constrain this to the parent on the both left and right and top sides. Now I want to update the nav host fragment, and I want to update this so that it is constrained to the bottom of the app bar. So I'll go into the XML. I'm going to come down to the fragment container view, and where it says constraint top to bottom of toolbar, you'll notice that it is giving a, a complaint here. It's saying the ID toolbar not defined anywhere. So all we need to do to update our constraint properly is type ID at plus ID toolbar. So now if we go back to the design view, we should see that we have a toolbar at the top and our nav host fragment below that. Now, while we're here in the main activity XML, there's one other small change we need to make. Fragment container view, even though it is what is recommended by the Android Studio IDE, there's actually an issue with this that will cause 
uh, your fragment not to be shown up on the screen correctly in some cases. So we're going to replace this with simply fragment. Now notice again, if you, if you hover over that, it'll say replace fragment with fragment container view. Uh, that is a bug, unfortunately. You do not want to do that. So replace it with fragment, and things should work as expected. So now it's time for us to actually configure our app bar and connect it with our navigation graph so that it updates as our navigation changes. To do that, we'll open up main activity. We're going to go into on create, hit enter a couple times, give us some space to work. And we're going to start by getting a reference to the nav controller. So we'll create a variable called nav controller equals find nav controller r dot id dot nav host fragment. And now we're going to create an app bar configuration. So again, we'll create a variable called val app bar configuration equals app bar configuration. And we will pass in nav controller dot graph. So that's going to create an app bar configuration based on our navigation graph. And now it's time to connect them. So we'll first get a reference to our toolbar by typing find view by ID. We have to pass in the, the toolbar type here within the brackets. Now we'll pass in the ID of r.id.toolbar. And now that we have a reference to our toolbar, we can call dot setup with nav controller. And we will pass in our nav controller and our app bar configuration. So now if we deploy this, we should see that our app bar will change in response to whatever fragment we're currently showing. And notice it's also now giving us the nice back button and even a little animation when the back button goes away. However, notice that the, the labels for this are not very nice. So how can we change that? Well, if we open up our navigation graph, if we look at the XML view, we'll see that each fragment has a label defined. However, by default, the labels are not very attractive. So we could replace these with better labels. So we could just type location entry fragment here to start and current forecast fragment. And then for the last one, forecast details fragment. Now let's redeploy and see what that looks like. So there we go. That looks a little bit better. We at least have sort of reasonable uh, capitalization and spacing. However, to the user, they really don't care that these are fragments at all. So one thing that we could do here to just give us a nice consistent look is instead of individual labels, we could just have our app name. So we'll type this by doing string slash app name. And we'll do that for each fragment. So now that each fragment is using app name as the label, our app bar should look consistent as we are navigating between screens. So this is something you may or may not want. That'll kind of depend on the design of your app. Uh, but for us, for this app, I think having that be consistent for now is a nice step. So now, bottom navigation really works if you have at least a couple of screens that you want to show at the top level. So for us, we're going to create a new forecast fragment. And we're going to call this weekly forecast fragment. To start, we're going to close all of our existing files. Then we're going to go over to the left-hand side of the screen into the project pane. We are going to right click on current forecast fragment. We're going to click copy. 
Then we're going to right click again and we're going to type paste. And this is going to copy current forecast fragment for us. And it's going to ask us to enter a new class name. And we're going to update the name to be weekly forecast fragment. And then hit OK. Next up, we want to go to the layout file for fragment current forecast. And once again, we're going to duplicate this. So I'll do a copy and then a paste. And this time I want to name it fragment weekly forecast. Once again, I'll hit okay. Now I can go ahead and close that, close the other layout. Now back here within the weekly forecast fragment, I want to update the reference to this layout to be fragment, whoops, fragment, whoops, something went wrong there, r.layout.fragment weekly forecast. I think Android Studio is a little confused, so I'm going to do a quick rebuild. For some reason, it is still confused here. Let's try to deploy, see if that unconfuses it. Okay, so that seemed to deploy okay. So we're gonna go ahead and move on for now. So now we wanna add weekly forecast fragment to our uh, nav graph. So I'm gonna open main underscore nav.xml, go to our design view here. I'm going to add a new destination, this time weekly forecast fragment. We'll see by default it has an unavailable preview, so it doesn't know really how to, how to show this for us. So I'm going to open up the XML come down to the very bottom where it added that element, and I'm going to say tools layout equals fragment weekly forecast. And if we go back into our design view here, now we see the nice preview. And we're going to go ahead and connect weekly forecast fragment to the details fragment and to the location entry fragment. So now let's uh, let's rearrange these a little bit so it makes a little bit more sense. So we're going to put the the forecast fragments on the left, the details and location entry on the right. And we'll see here we have this nice sort of balanced uh, navigation graph, except that we have this action going from location entry back to current forecast. We're going to go ahead and delete that for now because we're not going to need it anymore. So I'll select it, hit delete. And once again, because we have modified our graph and we want to generate the proper action classes, we're going to do a rebuild. That is going to give me an error saying that this class uh, does no longer exist. That's what we expect since we removed an action. And if we scroll down to where that was being used, we're just going to comment that out for now because we will update that here in a little bit. So now let's once again do a rebuild. And there we are. Okay, so now we're ready to actually add the bottom navigation view to our main activity. So let's open up activity main.xml and scroll down to the bottom. If we open up the design view, if we go to containers in our palette, we'll notice that we can find bottom navigation view. And we're just going to drag that to the bottom of our screen. And then let's go ahead and constrain this. So we'll go to the layout pane on the right hand side of the screen, and I'm going to hit the bottom add, the left, and the right. There we go. Uh, 
we're going to make sure that there is no margin attached. For layout width, we're going to do 0 dp. And for height, wrap content. Now let's go back to the XML just to double check how this is all looking. So constraint bottom to bottom of parent is correct. Constraint end, we want to be aligned to, to end of parent. There we go. I think that was causing the problem with mine. And start to start of parent. So there we go. Now we see that we have this uh, black bar down at the bottom of the screen. So now we want to update the nav host fragment to sit on top of that. So we'll do that. We'll click on it. We'll grab the little bottom arrow and we'll drag it to the top of the bottom nav view. Now let's go back into our bottom navigation view and uh, we need to connect this um, to our navigation graph eventually. Now just for some styling things here, we're going to update the background color of this to be uh, white so that it looks nice with the rest of our theme. So we're going to add the Android colon background property, select at color, excuse me, select at Android colon color slash white. And now if we look at the design view again, we'll notice that it's white down there at the bottom of the screen, which is what we want. Okay. So now the next step is we need to create a menu that will define the items shown in the bottom navigation view. So again, go to the project pane on the left hand side of the screen, go to res, Go to Menu, right-click, New Menu Resource File. We're going to name this main underscore nav since it will mirror our navigation fragment or our navigation graph. And I'll go ahead and hit OK. I'll add. And so now we're going to define menu items that will configure the tabs in our bottom navigation view. So to start, we will create a new item. Then we're going to add an ID. The ID for this first one is going to be current forecast fragment. We want to make sure that the ID used in these menu items matches the IDs in our navigation graph. So here I've used current forecast fragment. And if I look at my navigation view and I look at the current forecast fragment, it has the same ID. So I've passed in the ID. Now for the icon, I'm going to use the same location icon that we've used elsewhere. And now I can pass in a title. Now for the title, we're going to create a new string resource. So I'm going to go to my strings.xml file. I'm going to create a new string. I'm going to call that string bottom nav label today and I'm going to give it the value of today. Go back over to main nav here and go at string slash bottom, whoops, string slash, why is that not recognizing the string? Oops, that's because I selected a style, not a string, excuse me. So string. String name, bottom nav label today. There we go. Bottom nav label today. And then we'll finish off that item with the closing tag. So that will be our first menu item. Now we're going to select a second menu item, and this will be to show the weekly forecast. So again, item ID equals weekly forecast fragment this time. Now it wants an icon. Uh, so this time I'm going to create a new icon. So I'll come over to the left side of the screen, go to res, drawable, right click on drawable, go to new, vector asset. And I'm going to look for this icon here that is a, it's a cloud. 
So if I type cloud, I'll see we have a number of cloud looking icons here. I'm going to select this one that's just WB cloudy here and hit OK. Then we go ahead and hit finish and then we'll click finish and hit add. So now for my icon, I can sell it drawable. Oops, I see WB cloudy black. And for title, we're going to go back to strings and we're going to create a label for the weekly forecast. So again, I'll, I'll select a string resource name equals bottom nav label weekly. and I'm going to pass in the label of weekly. We'll go back to our menu at string bottom nav label weekly, and we'll close off that item tag. So now that we have our menu, we need to connect this to that bottom nav view. To do that, we'll go back to main activity, come down to the bottom where we have our bottom navigation view and we'll type app colon, menu equals at menu main nav. So now that is going to inflate that menu into the bottom navigation view, which will give us the, the icons and labels. So now we need to connect the bottom navigation view with our nav controller. And we'll do that very similarly to how we connected it to our toolbar. We'll go to main activity up to the top. After the line where we're getting access to our toolbar, we're going to do something very similar. So we're going to type find view by ID, bottom navigation view, r.id. bottom navigation. dot set up with nav controller, and we're going to pass in the nav controller. Now let's go ahead and run our app. And now let's see how this works. So notice down here at the bottom, we have our today fragment and we have our weekly fragment. If we tap between those, we'll see that we are getting that nice tab behavior. It's switching between the fragments. Um, although the, the app bar, is still updating and it's updating in, in kind of a weird way that we don't really want. We want that to just stay consistent. So let's go back to our, our main activity and we're going to change our app bar configuration. Instead of calling set up with a nav controller on our toolbar, we're just going to call set title and we're going to pass in our dot string dot app name. And now let's run this again and see what that has done for us. Now, as we switch between these tabs, the app bar is not updating. We're just getting the nice consistent name, um, which in this case is what we want. There are other designs out there where maybe you would want it to update, but for us, we just want this consistency. However, you might've noticed that it still wasn't quite right. Cause when we opened our app, it showed location entry fragment instead of the forecast fragment. Um, so what's going on here? Well, if we look at Android Studio again, we go back to our navigation graph. If we go back all the way sort of the beginning here, remember location entry fragment was specified as the start destination. It's got this little home icon on it. Um, this isn't really right anymore because that's not our home destination. Location entry fragment is not an entry point. It is somewhere you navigate to. So let's select current forecast fragment and then go up to the little menu right above here and click the house icon, which says assign start destination. Once I've done that, if I redeploy the app, it should now open up properly into the current forecast fragment. So now as I tab back and forth between the icons, it looks as expected. So
So now we're really down to sort of one final uh, piece that we want to update. And this is to just kind of consolidate and simplify how the navigation is being done. So specifically right now, when we click a button, we're telling App Navigator, hey, we want to go show this thing. And then ultimately main activity is the one using the nav controller to uh, go to different navigation locations. Um, we can actually simplify this a little bit further because fragments can actually get access to that same nav controller. So I'm going to start by just closing all of these files here. And then we're going to remove the app navigator interface from our project. And we're just going to do this kind of fragment by fragment. So I'll open forecast details fragment here. And we'll see that it is not, uh, it's not using the app navigator in any way. So uh, this is not a problem for us. Go ahead and close that. Next up, we'll go to current forecast fragment. It is using the app navigator. So I'm going to highlight that app navigator property and the on attach method. And I'm going to delete that. And as we scroll down, we'll see that we basically are now have two errors. We have an error when we try to go to location entry and an error when we try to show forecast details. So instead of using the app navigator, we're going to use the nav controller directly here. So I'm going to create a, a new method here, private fun show location entry. And then I'm going to replace this call within location entry button set on click listener to call into show location entry. And now right here, I'm going to use the same pattern we've been using in main activity. I'm going to get a reference to an action and use the nav controller to navigate to that action. So I'll type thou action equals current forecast directions dot action current forecast fragment to location entry fragment, such a long name. Then we can call find nav controller dot navigate and pass in our action. So now we're able to navigate to location entry fragment directly from current forecast fragment using the same nav controller that the activity was using. Now we can update this show forecast details method to do basically the same thing. Val action equals current forecast directions dot forecast details and we'll pass in forecast dot temp forecast dot description find nav controller oops find nav controller dot navigate and action. So now current forecast fragment uh, should be good to go. So let's close that. Let's open weekly forecast fragment. Um, and essentially we're going to need to do essentially the same thing. So we'll delete the references to app navigator. Scroll down here to show forecast details. Once again, create a new method called private fun show location details from location entry button on click listener. We're going to call show location details. Now let's implement show location details. So once again, thou action equals this time weekly forecast fragment directions dot action weekly forecast fragment to forecast details fragment. So I, let's see, I misnamed that. This should be show location entry. Excuse me. There we go. I apologize. So we created a new method called show location entry, and we're calling show location entry when the location entry button is clicked. So here, the action that we want is to 
show location entry fragment, and then we'll call find nav controller dot navigate action. Then we'll go down below val action equals weekly forecast fragment directions dot action weekly forecast fragment to forecast details fragment. We'll pass in forecast.temp and forecast.description. Then we'll call find nav controller dot navigate and we'll pass in action. So let's go ahead and close that. We'll come to location entry fragment. So once again, we're going to remove any reference to the app navigator. So for us, that means the, the property, we can remove the on create method and the on attach method. So now down here, we just need to define what happens when we click the submit button with a successful uh, zip code entered. So previously we were calling navigate to current forecast. Now all we want to do is tell the, the nav controller that we're no longer needed and they can remove us. So again, we're going to type find nav controller and this time we're going to type dot navigate up. Navigate up is essentially like navigate back. It's just going to pop this off and go back to whatever was there previously. So now we can go to main activity. We're going to go up to the top and we are going to remove the app navigator declaration in our class declaration. So we're no longer uh, implementing app navigator. And then we'll go down to the bottom and we're just going to remove these three methods that we previously were using in main activity to navigate. Now let's go ahead and go to app navigator and we're just going to right click on that and we're going to delete. Now that we've done all of that, we should be able to do a rebuild. Now that we've done the rebuild, let's go ahead and do a redeploy. And here we are. So we start on our current forecast fragment, go over to weekly fragment. We can go to the location entry. If we enter a zip code and hit submit, it'll enter that and go back to before. And we can go to our details and we can click back and it takes us back to our main screen here. So this is now a fully featured implementation of navigation. We're not making use of every feature, but we are now using the navigation controller to navigate to all the different screens in our app. So let's just real quickly again, walk through kind of what we've done here. So let's look at our main nav class. We've used the navigation component from the Android architecture components to define a navigation graph. That graph defines sort of two top level destinations, which is current forecast fragment and weekly forecast fragment. We were then able to use the visual editor to define how we go from those fragments to location entry fragment and our forecast details fragment. We, we were able to use our activity main XML file to provide a toolbar to respond to app bar changes in our theme. We have a nav host fragment to hold the fragments that are specified by the nav controller. 
And we have this bottom navigation view that provides sort of nice bottom navigation uh, implementation from material design. It lets us quickly switch between our top level destinations and it responds um, as we click with nice touch feedback and with labels and icons and such. So it gives us a nice look forward towards material design. So again, just notice, you know, the, the colors change, we're getting ripple effect. And then again, the fragments are changing. Um, and as we saw, we could update the, the app bar to change as well. However, in this case, we want it to just consistently have the app title. So this has been a, a good overview of navigation and what we can accomplish with it. So as we move forward, we're going to continue with this model of navigation within our app. Um, any, any other navigation between screens will be done using this. And as we move forward towards actually differentiating the data shown by each of these fragments, it'll become more and more apparent how this visual editor makes it really nice to use when uh, visualizing the navigation hierarchy in your project. So as always, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me and I will see you all in the next lecture.